Hello fellow watch fans and welcome to another video from me, So Watch Geek. 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 Now, <laughs> apologies at the outset for that dreadful Russian accent. It was probably no more Russian than if I'd have said it in a Scottish accent. But that's my generic Eastern European attempt and um, apologies once again if I have offended any of my Russian friends out there. I think that's even worse, is it? I don't know. Anyway, um, that's the waffle out of the way today. Today we are here to review my very first Vostok, my Vostok Amphibia. Am Amphibia. Now there are many outlets around the globe selling Vostoks or Boktoks or Wostoks or whatnots. Um, and uh, this isn't to be confused with Vostok Europe, which I believe are a separate company selling watches more designed for the European market. Now, there are a, a myriad, a, a plethora, nay, a shit ton of Vostoks out there with various combinations of bezel and dial and case. I purchased this from an UK eBay seller called Red Star Watches and I paid a hundred and just under a hundred and fifteen pounds delivered. Also available from Vostok Direct as well and the prices on the Vostok website which I think is Vostok.watches they're, they're a lot cheaper. As you know, you can get Vostoks. Well, you may not know. That's why I'm telling you. You can get Vostoks for under 70 euros with free worldwide shipping. Now, I wasn't sure if uh, there was any import duty or VAT to come on top of that. I know Russia. Well, are, are Russia in the EU? God, I'm showing how thick I am. I didn't want to bother with that anyway. So I bought it from the UK seller for a bit of peace of mind. So Vostok began producing watches as such in 1942 when I think it was the first Russian watch company relocated to, to Chustip, Chust, Chustip, <clears throat> relocated to Chistopol, 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 which is in the Federal Republic of Tatarstan. Tatarstan? Thanks for popping by. <laughs> which is a federal, have I said that right? Yes, Tatarstan, Tatar, Tatarstan, Tatarstan. Anyway, they are a federal subject of the Russian Federation. Well, enough about the history. That was it. That was the waffle done. Enough about the history and the brand. Let's get on with reviewing the watch. A very quick wrist check as usual before we start. Today I am wearing my limited edition Oris Carisfort Reef on my newly acquired and fitted stainless bracelet. I previously had the orange rubber um, and I think this, uh, this is rather good. Enough of that. So first of all, quickly onto the box that it came in. Has to be the cheapest plastic box that I have ever come across. The watch came wrapped in a bit of red tissue around an equally hard um, insert inside. It's functional, doesn't need to be anything else. That's fair enough. In terms of the instructions, well, they are all in Russian. I believe you can actually download them in English as well. There's really no need. Um, and a little touch on the instructions is we have the Red Star Watches stamp and the date on which the watch was purchased. So on to the watch itself and here it is. We'll go through the watch dimensions first. What we have here is a 41.5mm diameter with a 22mm lug width and a 48.8 very precise quoted 48.8 mil lug to lug and i've measured the watch to be 15 mil thick high polished front and sides 
a stainless steel case obviously, brushed on the reverse with the screw down case back and the Russian writing. The only bit I can decipher on that it is that the watch is 200 meter water resistant. The word amphibia, um, why do I keep saying amphibia? Hello Miss Fibia, what's your first name? Anne. <coughs> amphibia, sort of their word for diver, but it's a sort of amphibious, it can work on land and sea. So that's where the word amphibia comes from. Acrylic domed crystal, super domed there as you can see. I don't think there's any AR coating. Um, and the crown, now the crown is super huge, super huge crown. Now there isn't a crown guard, and there is a reason for that actually. When you unscrew the crown, okay, you have the Vostok characteristic crown wobble, which catches a lot of people out apparently. They think, oh, what's wrong with the watch? It's broken. No, this is a very, very clever design feature. This is due to the fact that the crown and the stem incorporate a clutch system. There isn't a spring ejecting the, the crown, it's a clutch system and these are coupled when the crown is pulled away from the stem. This now allows time adjustment and the wobble prevents any bending of the stem. When the crown is screwed back in, the clutch decouples, so the crown and the case basically become one, and the movement and the stem become one as well. So therefore, any shock from within the movement, and because of the large clearance between the stem and the stem tube, the stem doesn't bear any potentially damaging load. So it's a good feature. When you pull the crown out, it engages the um, stem and you can adjust the time and you can also wind the watch as well and when you push it back in they disengage very good and I have to say as well that this is one of the most easiest to screw in crowns it's big it's it easily there's no chance of any cross threading it just easily engages with the the crown easily engages with the thread and screws in a treat so onto the dial, there's nothing fancy at all in terms of quality. Everything is printed. Um, if you zoom in, it's, it's adequate, it's good, it's not bad, um, it's functional. And this is the thing with the Vostoks, they are rugged, functional watches. And it is what it is. Um, silver, sword, um, arrow, oh, f oh, sorry, carry again. Silver sword minute hand, silver arrow hour hand with inset loom and a red needle lollipop type second hand. The bezel, well, what drew me to this particular watch was the orange aluminium coin edge bezel. There's a loom pip at the 12. Now, this bezel is bi-directional. Yes, but don't get too excited. There is no ratchet or click system it's just a smooth rotate easy to grip easy to turn that's it whether that wears or gets looser i don't know um perhaps the price i paid for this might have been a little bit too high i don't know discuss the loom well the description on the ebay listing is Excellent loom, fantastic in the dark. Well, I have to disagree here a little bit. There are very, very small loom pips at the hour positions, but not between the 12 and the three. Just the loom pip on the bezel. So it's, it's adequate, but I wouldn't say it was anything to write home about. On to the movement then. Well, this uses the uh, Vostok's in-house calibre 2416B, which is hand winding. Screw the crown out again. You can then immediately feel that engagement when you start to wind. And it's an automatic as well. So it does have a quoted 40 hour power reserve. So it's hand winding, it's non-hacking. 
And that's the other thing, you pull the crown all the way out and you have to keep the crown sort of pulled out to, uh, to engage that clutch really, but there's no hacking at all and there is no quick set date. You can cheat that by advancing the watch past midnight. Let's do it right, so it's clicked over. Go on to about two o'clock and now if we rewind the hour hand, see, I haven't engaged it fully enough. It's starting to come back on itself. It worked in rehearsals. So let's, apparently you can hear a click. I can't hear a click. I've advanced that to two o'clock. So now let's rewind that past midnight. And the, ah, there, it sort of started to rewind, but didn't. Now, so that was about sort of nine o'clock. Now if I advance it again, and at 12, it clicks out. That's, that's a ball's ache, it really is. That, that's, um, I don't wear the same watch in two days running. Um, I'll quite often pick up one of my watches and um, the date will be the 7th and, and it's the 25th. Now if I do that with this, that's gonna take some adjusting to get the date right um, i know a lot of people don't bother setting the dates right on the watches no 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 it, the date has to be set for me it has to be said um so that is that is a negative i'd have thought for the price you know 115 pounds you can get an awful lot of watches for that price and less that have sapphire crystal ceramic bezel um uh what else yes quick set date etc etc um, but it is what it is it's a Vostok the movement is a very rugged and reliable movement it does have a quoted accuracy of minus 20 to plus 60 seconds a day in the time that I've had this it seems to be advancing a couple of seconds a day which is nothing um, it vibrates at its 31 joule movement with a um, vibrations per hour of 19,800 and a 40 hour power reserve. Um, it's very functional, doesn't look pretty inside, I've seen some pictures, doesn't look pretty inside but it's functional, it does what it says on the tin. If you can accept the quirky nature of the watch, it is a very good uh, daily beater really. Um, there you go. This came on a leather strap, black leather with a corresponding, complementary, complementary orange stitching, which works really well with the orange bezel. It was a bit stiff, but of course it's brand new leather. That's going to need some wearing in. And it says on the back, genuine leather. So therefore it must be real leather, which I think it is. There we go, so let's just, um, oh, I didn't put my gloves on. Oh, man. I'm gonna do all this again. I'm gonna do all this again. Oh my God. I didn't put me bloody fancy gloves on. Do you know what? I don't think I need to. Yeah. So let's just get this watch on the wrist while I talk about my thoughts and conclusion. There we go. This is how it wears on my exactly seven inch wrist. Wears nice, still feels a little bit tight around the leather, but that will give. So my thoughts then, well, it very much is what it is. It's a Vostok. We know that they are ut utilitarian. They're a, um, a workhorse. They are reliable, functional, quirky, um, no fancy bezel movement, no fancy bezel insert, the winding of it and the the setting of the time and the date are quirky to say the least. But do you know what? I absolutely love it. I really do. I think I'd have been more happy if I'd have spent under £70 on it. Perhaps if I get another Vostok, I may try getting it direct from Vostok themselves to um, see how long the delivery takes and see if there are any hidden charges. Um, but £115 for this... I think it's just about, just about um, worth it. I certainly wouldn't be paying any more for it. But I like it, I really do. And it will feature as one of my, um, my uh, daily rotational watches. Well, what do you think? There you go. 
Anyway, that is enough from me, guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that very small and very little review. I might report back on what I think of it after I've had it for a couple of months. I probably won't. Um, so don't forget, if you would like to please like and subscribe, I have to keep saying it. I'm picking up a few subscribers here and there, and I appreciate that very, very much indeed. Thank you very much, guys. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and da scorri I hope this is in f focus.